Even as he approaches his 90s, Robert Redford remains a stalwart figure in Hollywood, representing one of the few remaining stars from the golden age of cinema. However, despite his enduring career spanning over six decades, Redford's life has been marked by numerous hardships. In fact, Redford had suffered more hardships by the time he first appeared in screen in 1960's Tall Story than most do in a life team. And sadly, his later years haven't been much kinder, either. From battling childhood illnesses and surviving near-death experiences to enduring the pain of marriage breakups and coping with several devastating losses, Redford's life story proves that being an award-winning movie icon doesn't make you immune from problems. Let's delve in. He almost died of polio. Despite his inclination toward privacy, Redford chose to peel back the layers of his life to some extent in 2011. Teaming up with author Michael Feeney Callan, their collaboration gave birth to Robert Redford The Biography, offering a thorough exploration of the actor's life. Within its pages lay previously undisclosed or little-known facets of Redford's personal journey. One particularly intriguing revelation harkened back to his childhood, specifically the spring of 1949 when, at the tender age of 11, he awoke to find his eyelids encrusted and his limbs unresponsive. It was weeks before the diagnosis was revealed. Polio, a merciless disease notorious for its severe respiratory issues, paralysis, and often fatal consequences. Despite the near eradication of polio, thanks to a vaccine in the 1950s, Redford's formative years unfolded in the 1930s and 40s when the specter of the disease loomed large. Polio, though present for centuries, escalated to pandemic levels in the 20th century. Despite its high contagion, the majority of cases exhibited no symptoms, complicating efforts to trace its spread and isolate the infected. However, in approximately 2% of instances, polio's severity led to muscle damage and limb paralysis, notably affecting respiratory muscles, necessitating the invention of the iron lung. This device, which housed thousands of afflicted children, remains in use today. The global campaign to eradicate wild polio stands as a monumental achievement in the annals of science. Unfortunately, this triumph eluded Redford during his formative years. Although fortunate not to suffer severely, the future luminary endured a stint confined to bed at the tender age of 11 after pushing himself too hard during a swim in the ocean. Reflecting on the era in a 2018 NPR interview, Redford underscored the pervasive fear surrounding polio in the mid-1940s, emphasizing how it loomed over every child's existence prior to the discovery of the Salk vaccine. Before the Salk vaccine was discovered, what hung over your childhood was always the fear of polio because all you saw were people in iron lungs. Years later, Redford would pay homage to the scientific breakthrough that transformed countless lives. In 2014, he ventured behind the camera to direct a segment of the 3D documentary, Cathedrals of Culture, spotlighting San Diego's Salk Institute for Biological Studies and the legacy of its founder, Jonas Salk. Recalling his own experiences with the polio epidemic, Redford expressed the seismic impact of Salk's vaccine, describing it as earth-shattering news in an interview in 2014. Robert Redford lost an important father figure at a young age. Growing up in the Los Angeles area, Robert Redford's formative years were significantly influenced by his parents, Martha and Charles. Charles, who transitioned from being a milkman to working as an accountant for Standard Oil, shouldered the responsibility of supporting the family amidst the challenges brought about by the Great Depression. This period, marked by the most prolonged and severe economic downturn in U.S. history, saw industrial production plummet, unemployment rates soar, and families endure immense hardships. Charles's demanding work schedule during this tumultuous era left little room for familial bonding, prompting Redford's uncle David to step in as a surrogate father figure for the aspiring Hollywood star. Redford, who would later explore various interests ranging from sports to intellectual pursuits and the arts, likely drew inspiration from his well-rounded uncle. David, 
a skilled football player fluent in four languages, left a lasting impression on Redford through their shared activities. Serving in the U.S. military, particularly as an interpreter in General George S. Patton's Third Army, David continued to play a significant role in Redford's life. Their shared moments, including playing baseball during furloughs and attending movies together, created enduring memories for the young Redford. One particular film that left a profound impact was The Fallen Sparrow, starring John Garfield, which, despite being dark and eerie for a young Redford, sparked his admiration for Garfield's work. However, in the early 1940s, David Redford, the influential uncle in young Robert Redford's life, was called away to serve in combat during World War II. Tragically, he met his end on January 1, 1945, in the Battle of the Bulge while on a top-secret mission in Germany, falling to sniper fire as part of a small team. It took a week for the news of David's death to reach home. Eight-year-old Bobby, as Robert Redford was known then, was pulled out of school when an army major arrived with the devastating details. David's passing left a profound imprint on young Redford, forcing him to confront the harsh realities of mortality and truth at a tender age. However, the Redford family lacked adequate grief support. Their prevailing ethos was one of stoicism, rooted in their Irish and Scottish heritage, where tragic events were endured without much expression or discussion. Redford's family members were not particularly emotionally demonstrative. They rarely engaged in conversation, complaints, or open displays of emotion. This stoic approach was evident even when Redford's mother fast the loss of twin girls at birth. The family simply accepted the tragedy as part of life's challenges and moved forward with grace without discussing it. Growing up in an environment where adversity was met with resilience and quiet strength profoundly influenced Redford's own outlook on life's difficulties. Robert Redford nearly died in a dare gone wrong. It might come as a surprise to many that Robert Redford had a rebellious streak during his teenage years. Yes, the esteemed Hollywood icon, known for his dignified presence on screen, once found himself entangled in mischief as a member of a street gang in his hometown of Van Nuys. Alongside his peers, Redford engaged in acts of rebellion that often pushed the boundaries of danger, with risky dares becoming a regular part of their routine. However, one dare, in particular, nearly had dire consequences for the future Academy Award winner. In a bid to prove his courage and assert his place within the group, Redford accepted a challenge to leap from a considerable height off a building. As recounted in the 2011 biography, Robert Redford, the biography, the experience of confronting his fears left a lasting impression on the young Redford. Reflecting on the incident, he mused, facing down fears hit home early. You have two choices, it seemed to me. You can be led by your fears, or you can overcome them. Having seemingly demonstrated his mettle, albeit narrowly escaping serious injury, Redford continued to partake in the gang's activities. Petty theft emerged as a favored pastime, with pilfering alcohol from nearby stores ranking high on their list of exploits. However, Redford's foray into a life of delinquency appeared to end at the age of 16 when he found himself in trouble with the law after being apprehended for possession of stolen jewelry. Robert Redford got kicked out of college. While Robert Redford bid farewell to his brief flirtation with a criminal lifestyle during his late teens after a brush with law enforcement, his transition to becoming a model citizen was not immediate. In fact, during his time at the University of Colorado, the future Hollywood icon cultivated quite a reputation as a party enthusiast. In his 2011 biography, Robert Redford, The Biography, author Michael Callanfini noted, Redford had become beloved in the drinking circles but was regarded as a loose cannon. Though the specifics of his antics within the Kappa Sigma fraternity remain undocumented, Redford's swift expulsion from the college after a mere 18 months suggests that his behavior was less than exemplary. Nevertheless, expulsion from the University of Colorado did not mark the end of Redford's pursuit of knowledge. Following the loss of his scholarship, he embarked on a journey of artistic exploration, 
honing his skills in painting in both Florence and Paris. Subsequently, he furthered his education at New York's prestigious American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Interestingly, despite Redford's tumultuous tenure at the University of Colorado, the institution remained open to future Redford family members. Notably, two of the star's children, Shauna and Jamie, were later granted admission to the university. His friend Natalie Wood died in mysterious circumstances. Despite the early tragedies of his childhood, Robert Redford found solace in the company of individuals who would play significant roles in his life later on. In the 1950s, at Van Nuys High School in Southern California, two future screen legends, Robert Redford and Natalie Wood, shared the same academic halls. While their paths did not intersect during their high school years, their fates would eventually intertwine. During his time in high school, Redford distinguished himself as an athlete, while Wood had already made a name for herself as a celebrated child star, notably appearing in Miracle on 34th Street and earning an Oscar nomination for her role in Rebel Without a Cause. However, it wasn't until the 1960s that their paths would cross again, leading to a collaboration and a deep friendship. Their partnership flourished in films such as Inside Daisy Clover and This Property is Condemned, where Redford secured a breakthrough Golden Globe winning role, thanks in part to Wood's recommendation. Additionally, the duo shared the screen in The Candidate, where Wood made a cameo appearance and Redford served as the best man at one of her weddings. Tragedy struck in 1981, when Natalie Wood lost her life under mysterious circumstances during a boating trip around Catalina Island with her husband, Robert Wagner, and actor Christopher Walken. Wood's drowning, with the exact details of how and when she entered the water remaining unknown, has fueled ongoing speculation. Her passing at the age of 43 was a profound loss, considering her multiple Academy Award nominations and illustrious career. Adding a haunting layer to the tragedy was Wood's lifelong fear of water, rooted deeply since childhood. According to her sister, Lana Wood, Natalie's trepidation towards water was palpable, making the circumstances surrounding her death even more unsettling. Even the idea of Natalie boarding a dinghy raised concerns, suggesting that her demise might not have been a mere accident. Lana firmly believes that Natalie would never intentionally put herself in a situation leading to such a tragic end. Natalie's fear of water was so pervasive that she wouldn't even venture into her own swimming pool. In the aftermath of Natalie Wood's untimely passing, Robert Redford, profoundly impacted by the loss of his friend, broke his typically reserved demeanor to express their deep connection. In heartfelt tributes on Turner Classic Movies and interviews for the HBO documentary What Remains Behind. In 2020, Redford lamented the unfortunate end of their friendship. He shared his sorrow over Natalie Wood's tragic loss, expressing a wish that they could have had the chance to reunite. Robert Redford lost his mom aged 18. Robert Redford moved attendees of the Utah Women's Leadership Celebration at the 2018 Sundance Film Festival to tears as he delivered a poignant tribute to his beloved mother, Martha Redford. Martha's life tragically ended in 1955 at the tender age of 40 due to a hemorrhage, a complication stemming from a blood disorder she contracted during the stillbirth of her twin daughters eight years prior. Reflecting on his teenage years, Redford candidly admitted that he hadn't always made life easy for his mother. Despite his rebellious nature during adolescence, Martha remained a steadfast source of support and belief in her son's potential. She believed that all things considered, she just had faith that I had something in me that was going to turn out okay, Redford shared, his voice tinged with emotion. Regrettably, Martha didn't live to witness her faith in her son vindicated as Redford would make his screen debut five years after her passing. Expressing his admiration for his mother's enduring qualities, Redford fondly recalled Martha's radiant smile, adventurous spirit, and unwavering positivity. Addressing the star-studded audience, which included his longtime friend, actress Jane Fonda, Redford expressed a heartfelt wish 
that he had appreciated his mother more during her lifetime. I took her for granted because that's the way kids were at that age. My regret is that she passed away before I could thank her. Troubled Marriage and Loss Robert Redford's enduring marriage to Lola Van Wagenen began in 1958, long before his ascent to fame in Hollywood. At the time, Redford faced setbacks, including the loss of his baseball scholarship due to involvement in petty crimes such as stealing beer and breaking into homes at night. However, these challenges led him to enroll in the American Academy of Dramatic Art, where he discovered his passion for acting. In 1957, Redford crossed paths with Lola, a Mormon historian based in Los Angeles, and the two quickly fell in love. They eloped to Las Vegas a year later, welcoming their first child, Scott, shortly thereafter. Settling in a Manhattan apartment, Redford balanced his studies at the Pratt Institute with his burgeoning Broadway career. Tragedy struck early in their marriage when their infant son, Scott, passed away from sudden infant death syndrome at just 10 weeks old. The loss deeply affected Robert and Lola, compounded by financial struggles and the challenges of Redford's fledgling theater career. Reflecting on the experience later in life, Redford described it as an extremely difficult period, marked by youth, financial strain, and limited income from his acting endeavors. The lack of understanding surrounding sudden infant death syndrome led to feelings of self-blame, leaving a lasting emotional scar on the couple, who chose to keep the details of the event private. Robert Redford found solace in quietly supporting research on sudden infant death syndrome causes, channeling his grief into contributing to the understanding of this tragic phenomenon. Despite a rocky start, his marriage to Lola Van Wagen endured for nearly three decades fueled partly by Redford's determination to defy doubts about his potential downward spiral. With just $300 to their name when they wed, they faced skepticism, but their union persevered, resulting in three children. However, the couple ultimately went their separate ways in 1985. It wasn't until 16 years later, in 2001, that Redford openly reflected on their divorce. He shared with the public that the split was amicable, a mutual decision that felt right for both of them. Despite parting ways, Redford emphasized the enduring love, affection, and friendship they maintained, which he found remarkable. He credited their ability to raise great kids who weathered the divorce well to their mutual efforts and shared values. Redford set out to challenge the stereotype of failed marriages in show business but ultimately found himself unable to defy it. Reflecting on his life after divorce, he admitted to a period of feeling adrift following unsuccessful relationships with Sonia Braga and Kathy Orr. However, in 1996, he found companionship with artist Sibyl Zagars, a connection that endured for over a decade. It wasn't until 2009 that Redford took the plunge again, marrying German artist Sibyl Zagars, nearly 25 years after his divorce. Interestingly, the couple had been living together since the mid-90s at Redford's Sundance home. Robert Redford's son James almost died at birth. Three years after the devastating loss of their first son Scott, Robert Redford and Lola Van Wagen faced yet another harrowing ordeal with the premature birth of their second son James, arriving seven weeks ahead of schedule. Born with a respiratory problem, James's fragile life hung in the balance echoing the traumatic experience they had endured before. Adding to the distress, Lola's own life was at risk. In 1962, James Redford entered the world prematurely, diagnosed with hyaline membrane disease, a condition that had also afflicted John F. Kennedy's second son, Patrick. With a slim 40% chance of survival, both Jamie and his mother Lola defied the odds, bringing immense relief to the Redford family. However, the challenges for James were far from over. During his teenage years, James developed ulcerative colitis, a chronic digestive condition characterized by inflammation of the colon, infections, and blood flow issues. Complications arising from colitis eventually led to cirrhosis, and at the young age of 31, James underwent a liver transplant. Thus, 
he not only faced the daunting prospect of having his colon removed, but also had to undergo a transplant procedure. Despite initial hopes for improvement, the first transplant failed to resolve James's health issues, necessitating another transplant. The search for a compatible organ during this dire period was described by Robert Redford as the most challenging 12 weeks of their lives. Despite his commitments to filming Quiz Show in New York, Redford made sure to fly to Omaha every weekend to be by Jamie's side during his hospitalization. Miraculously, James survived the grueling ordeal and slowly began to recover after the second transplant, although he encountered serious complications along the way. Nevertheless, he not only managed to survive but also flourished enjoying a successful career as a filmmaker and producer for the next three decades. A boyfriend of Robert Redford's daughter was murdered. Tragedy once again struck Robert Redford's family, particularly his daughter, in 1983. It remains a haunting, unsolved mystery to this day. Shauna Redford's boyfriend, Sid Wells, a journalism student at the University of Colorado, was tragically shot in the back of the head at his apartment. The prime suspect in this shocking murder was Wells' roommate Thane Smika, who allegedly owed rent on the day of the incident. Although Smika was arrested, the lack of concrete evidence prevented him from being charged or indicted by a grand jury. Astonishingly, Smika vanished without a trace in 1986. His car was discovered abandoned in Beverly Hills, fueling speculation that he may have fled the country altogether. The case took a compelling turn in 2010 when new evidence emerged, prompting a review of the case by the district attorney's office in Boulder County. Subsequently, an arrest affidavit was authorized. Despite the renewed efforts, including the release of age-progressed mugshots and a public appeal for information, Smika remains at large. The tragedy for the Redford family continued even after the loss of Wells. Just eight months later, Shauna faced her own brush with danger while driving her Ford Bronco near Salt Lake City. She lost control of the vehicle, sending it plunging into the icy waters of the Jordan River. Fortunately, a local hero named Doreen Stoker Rivers witnessed the accident and bravely dove into the frigid river to rescue Shauna, who had lost consciousness. Expressing his deep gratitude, Robert Redford extended an invitation to Rivers to attend the premiere of The Natural in 1984. This film had temporarily halted production to allow Redford to attend Wells' funeral, an event he had initially considered skipping due to concerns about media intrusion. Reflecting on the tragic incident in a 1997 interview, Redford confessed that the memory still haunted him, likening it to a partially open door revealing a very dark room. Robert Redford's son James died from liver cancer. The loss of a child is a tragedy no parent should ever have to endure. And for Robert Redford and his ex-wife Lola Van Wagenen, this heartbreak struck not once, but twice. In October 2020, they faced the devastating news of their son James's passing at the age of just 58, succumbing to liver cancer. James, born three years after the loss of his infant brother Scott, battled liver issues throughout his life. In 1993, he underwent a liver transplant surgery, a procedure that inspired him to establish an institute dedicated to raising awareness about organ transplantation. Despite his efforts, James's health took another dire turn in 2019 when he was diagnosed with bile duct cancer while awaiting a second transplant. Tragically, his wife Kyle, also the mother of his two children, announced on Twitter in 2020 that James had lost his battle with the disease, leaving a void in the hearts of many who knew and loved him. In a statement provided to People magazine, Robert Redford's publicist, Cindy Berger, expressed the family's profound grief during this challenging time, and requested privacy for the mourning family. She emphasized the immeasurable pain of losing a child and highlighted James's legacy as a loving son, husband, and father.
His impact on the world lives on through his children, his artistic endeavors, his contributions to filmmaking, and his unwavering dedication to conservation and environmental causes. His friendship with Paul Newman. Redford's journey to stardom took off in 1967 with Barefoot in the Park, where he starred alongside Jane Fonda, who held him in high regard. Despite Fonda's admiration, their relationship remained purely platonic. Fonda reminisced about Redford's remarkable kissing skills, but noted his reluctance when it came to love scenes. Redford's career reached new heights with Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, where he shared the screen with Paul Newman. Initially, heavyweight actors like Marlon Brando and Warren Beatty were considered for the roles. However, after meeting Redford, Newman insisted on casting the relatively unknown actor, leading to a remarkable partnership. Their on-screen chemistry catapulted the film to an $80 million box office success. This marked the beginning of a remarkable friendship between Newman and Redford, which endured until Newman's passing in 2008. Apart from their cinematic collaboration, Newman stood by Redford during the challenging end of his 28-year marriage to Lola. The foundation of their friendship lay in shared laughter. Redford, renowned for his humor, once jokingly gifted Newman a present for his 50th birthday, a dented, engineless Porsche wrapped with a bow. Newman had the car crushed and returned the remains to Redford without missing a beat. Undeterred, Redford transformed the crushed metal into a garden sculpture and personally delivered it to Newman, who lived just a mile away in Connecticut. Their playful antics included a silent agreement never to acknowledge the pranks they played on each other. The Porsche incident was never spoken of between them. For Redford, this friendship held a deep place in his heart. Newman was a true friend. While Redford received praise as a heartthrob for his portrayal of Sundance, the constant focus on his appearance became burdensome. He missed out on a role in The Graduate because he had never experienced rejection by a woman, viewing his handsome looks as a hindrance. He desired recognition based on his acting talent rather than his appearance, longing to be seen as an actor, not a model. For Redford, the essence of entering the acting profession was rooted in the craft itself. While actors took pride in the authenticity of their performances, Redford often found himself defined by his blonde hair rather than his acting prowess. As he entered his later years, Redford amassed a fortune of $150 million from blockbuster hits like The Way We Were, Indecent Proposal, and All the President's Men. Today, Redford enjoys the role of grandfather to seven grandchildren. He resides with his second wife, Sibyl Sagars, in the picturesque expanse of their 6,000-acre Utah ranch. As we delve into the tragic details of Robert Redford's life, we're reminded of the highs and lows that come with fame and fortune. Despite the challenges he faced, Redford's resilience and dedication to his craft shone through. What aspect of Robert Redford's story resonates with you the most? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more intriguing content about the captivating life of Robert Redford. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.